Since the dawn of humanity, the moon has been a source of fascination and mystery. This celestial body that orbits our planet has been central to many myths, religions, and scientific discoveries throughout history. Even in the modern space age, our closest neighbor still holds many secrets and unknowns. This video will dive deeper into the most fascinating lunar oddities and the theories proposed to explain them. There is still so much to uncover about the cosmic body that has stimulated human imagination since prehistory. What new revelations awaits us on and below the surface of the moon? One of the most perplexing lunar structures are the so-called moon towers. These enormous tower-like formations that protrude vertically near the rim of certain craters on the moon's surface. Some of these lunar towers can reach an astonishing height of over 5,000 feet. That's taller than the 1,776 feet height of the towering spire on New York's One World Trade Center building. The lunar towers were first photographed in 1966 by NASA's Lunar Orbiter Program. The images revealed these strange formations poking out of the edges of the craters like giant minarets, totally unlike any typical geology. Scientists at the time dismissed them as unusual but natural moon rock formations caused by uplifts of deep crust layers. However, Many researchers have expressed doubts about the mundane explanation. Some scientists have proposed that the lunar towers could be evidence of ancient intelligent alien activity on the moon. Perhaps there were supports for giant lunar buildings erected by extraterrestrials. Or maybe they served as foundations for machinery used in mining operations to extract resources from the moon. Of course, this idea is considered fringe science with no direct supporting evidence. But it does illustrate how profoundly perplexing these enormous lunar structures are to our understanding of natural geology. With future lunar exploration missions in the works, scientists may finally get a closer look at these enigmatic lunar formations. Perhaps even collect samples to reconstruct their origin that could reveal if conventional geology is behind the moon towers or if something more astonishing shaped these towering lunar anomalies. In addition to strange structures, numerous reports exist of odd glowing lights observed on the lunar surface, mysterious flashes and illuminations in various craters and locations have been spotted and photographed for decades. These transient lunar glows have spawned many theories about their possible origin and nature. Early Apollo astronauts reported seeing faint lights across the lunar landscape that resembled the electric illumination of a distant town at night. But there is limited documentation. Other lunar light sightings come from astronomers making observations through telescopes. These observations are more concrete with verified photos. The lights last only a brief time, ranging from a few seconds to several minutes. They've been seen in craters pointing away from sunlight, so they can't simply be reflections. Leading scientific explanations include electrostatic discharges of dust particles on the moon's surface or outgassing events from moonquakes exposing icy deposits underneath. But the precise mechanism behind these eerie glows is still debated. More speculative theories have proposed that the lunar lights could be from extraterrestrial spacecraft operating on the moon's surface, possibly mining facilities powered by electric lights. Some even suggest the possibility of bioluminescent life forms on the moon accounting for the illumination. Of course, there is no evidence to substantiate such fantastic explanations currently, but it illustrates the air of mystery still surrounding these anomalous lunar lights. Future lunar missions could shed new light on this phenomenon, literally. Getting a closer view of the lunar surface could reveal the underlying physical processes driving these transient glowing events. For now, the strange lights represent one more weird mystery about our nearest space neighbor, beckoning exploration. 
Our next category of lunar oddities relates to the presence of water on the moon's surface. For decades, the moon was thought to be completely dry and lacking water. But recent discoveries over the past 15 years have shocked scientists and revealed that our moon actually does contain significant amounts of water in the form of ice. This lunar water exists predominantly around the permanently shadowed regions of craters near the moon's south pole. In 2009, NASA's L-Cross probe detected frozen water in these craters by slamming into the moon's surface and analyzing the plume of debris. It's estimated there could be up to 600 million tons of water ice on our dusty neighbor. The presence of so much water on the bone-dry moon is very strange and raises some big questions. Where did this water come from, and why is it concentrated at the lunar poles? The current leading theory is that the moon's water came from a comet and asteroid impacts. These space rocks carried water as they bombarded the moon over billions of years. The water molecules migrated to the permanently dark, freezing craters where they've remained trapped as ice. But some scientists question whether impacting space objects fully account for the sheer volume of lunar ice seen today. There may be another source contributing to this moon water mystery. One incredible theory proposes that some of the moon's water actually comes from Earth. The hypothesis suggests that hydrogen atoms can escape Earth's atmosphere, ride solar winds to the moon, and combine with oxygen atoms in lunar soil to produce water. This amazing idea that Earth may be slowly hydrating the moon could explain why our dusty neighbor isn't quite as dry as we thought. It opens up a mind-blowing connection between the origins of Earth and lunar water. The moon's ice deposits present tantalizing opportunities for future lunar bases to harvest water for drinking and growing food and split it into rocket fuel. But fully unlocking the secrets of the moon's water and its ripple effects across the solar system will require more exploration of the lunar depths. Since we're talking about exploration, let's do a little bit of lunar history. A little known fact about mankind's history of lunar exploration is how many failed attempts occurred before success was achieved. In the early space age of the 1950s and 1960s, NASA, the Soviet space program, and other agencies had many crashed probes and landers before safely touching down on the moon. The very first attempts to reach the lunar surface involved deliberately crashing probes into the moon, starting with the Soviet Luna 2 in 1959. This evolved into trying to make soft landings with automated surveyor landers in 1966. But several of NASA's surveyor probes failed to enroute or crashed, showing the difficulty of landing on the moon. Even during crewed Apollo missions, danger lurked. On Apollo 11 in 1969, Neil Armstrong had to take emergency manual control to avoid a disastrous overshoot of the landing zone. And during Apollo 13, an oxygen tank explosion aborting the landing showed how precarious lunar missions could be. In total, there were nearly 20 failed lunar landing attempts globally until 1966, when the first soft touchdown finally accomplished by the Soviet Luna 9 probe. These many crashes remind us that while the Apollo lunar landings may seem routine in hindsight, they were the culmination of a long chain of failures and hard-learned engineering lessons. Even today, countries like India and private companies are still struggling to master soft lunar landings. The moon may be close, but safely descending to its surface from space remains extremely difficult. Why is that? The moon's gravity is not uniform. There are strange fluctuations and concentration of mass hidden below the surface that create anomalies in the moon's gravitational field. In some places, the gravitational pull is slightly stronger than expected. In others, it's curiously weaker. Understanding the precise workings of lunar gravity is crucial for future missions. In 2019, Scientists confirmed a large excess mass hidden at the moon's south pole. It exerts extra gravitational attraction equivalent to a heavy circular slab of iron measuring over 600 miles wide. 
One theory is that this represents dense oxides left from an ancient meteorite impact. But other researchers think it could be a metal asteroid that sank into the moon long ago. Additionally, orbiting probes have detected puzzling gravitational variations and fluctuations around certain lunar craters and basins. These relate to subsurface density changes that remain unexplained. During Apollo 16, astronauts noticed the lunar module was off target just before landing due to an unexpected gravity shift, showing surprises still lurk in the moon's gravitational field. Figuring out the moon's gravitational anomalies will be key for future lunar bases and traveling across the surface. Small gravity fluctuations could spell disaster for vessels trying to land or take off. Some theorists have even conjectured that hidden alien artifacts or structures beneath the surface may account for some of these gravitational puzzles. While probably not the case, it shows how much mystery still surrounds the moon's erratic gravity. When trying to understand the immense challenges of landing on the moon, it helps to compare it to Mars. NASA has successfully landed several advanced vehicles in the Red Planet, but Mars's atmosphere makes arriving easier compared to the airless moon. The key difference is that Mars has enough of an atmosphere to assist with deceleration and landing. This allows for the use of parachutes, heat shields, and airbags to cushion touchdowns. Pathfinder, Spirit, Opportunity, and Perseverance all used variations of this technique. Without an atmosphere, the moon has no such luxury. There is no air resistance or drag to slow down a landing craft. It must rely entirely on perfectly timed and executed rocket braking. Going from orbital speed to zero relative to the surface using only thrusters is extremely difficult. One small mistake in the landing sequence can doom the entire mission, as history has shown. In addition, Mars provides more communication support. Landing vehicles are within reasonable radio transmission times to allow some Earth guidance. On the Moon, the 2.5-second radio delay means no real-time intervention is possible. Lunar landers must self-pilot fully automated. The Moon's stark vacuum environment ensures that softly descending to its surface remains one of the spaceflight's supreme technical hurdles. Understanding the Moon's landing difficulties provides a renewed appreciation for the skill and risks involved in humanity's journey to the lunar surface. Perhaps one day we'll finally understand the origin of the lunar ice deposits, study the lunar towers up close, and map the web of gravity fluctuations across the entire moon. One thing is certain, our celestial neighbor still has many astonishing secrets left to reveal, and the moon's weird mysteries will continue to inspire our imagination, curiosity, and future in space. If you enjoyed this video, leave a comment below, and don't forget to check out our video, What the Journey to Mars Will Be Like. Also, subscribe for more videos like this.